Hi, everybody. Happy to be here with two guests from the largest nation's largest organization of progressive veterans, Common Defense. Today, I have with me Zachary Shrewsburg and Lakeisha Lloyd. Thank you so much for joining me on the program today. I'm very excited to have you here. Thank you for having us. We're Thank excited you. to be here as well. Oh, it's great. Well, I in the intro to the program, I talked about how Common Defense is ramping up efforts in the realm of climate justice. And you guys are starting with the one person who is unfortunately the linchpin in federal climate policy. That is Joe Manchin. Um, where do we start? You know, last week you met with Senator Manchin's staff to discuss the importance of investing in clean energy and good green jobs for veterans and also working class communities. How was that? <laughs> were they at least welcoming? Lakeisha, what do you think? I mean, honestly, they were very welcoming. Um, we had a, we actually had a very productive meeting uh, with his staff members, a couple that are here for, from West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And who themselves, uh, you know, had personal stories of, you know, growing up here in the state and remembering, you know, in high school, how they had friends who went into the military. And when they got home, there was no jobs for them, um, you know, and how, you know, they understood the fact that when we're looking at the mining community here in the state, um, that a lot of them are veterans, you know. So this is something that I will say that uh, his staff is very aware of. Um, and we left those meetings feeling pretty optimistic. Really? That, uh, yeah, yeah. That, you know, this is something that he's actually looking at. Um, especially when we're looking at here in the state of West Virginia, bringing in renewable green energy jobs in the state where traditionally, if you wanted to make a good paycheck, you either went in the mines or you went in the military. Right. Right. Uh, so, you know, this is, yeah, uh, yeah. I always say that uh, veterans is West Virginia issues are veterans issues and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it was actually, it was really good. Was Many of the climate concerned people uh, have just basically we written off Joe Manchin as a lost cause, given his ties to the coal industry. Are there any levers of power that we, the people could really pull to move him given such a reality? Zach, would you like to weigh in? I mean, sure. Um, I would say the best leverage you have is just continually to focus on the working class people themselves. The, a lot of times, especially when we talk about climate, we, we focus on that emergency, for example, but we forget about the men and women who have to keep their jobs like miners, for example. If you want to end the gridlock in Washington, so to speak, you have to make them the forefront before you can even get close to talking about renewable energy or green jobs. So ensuring that they have a transition program, their bills are covered, or they have a job going out of the mines, whatever job they're leaving, they have that option. Their families are covered. You know, if you make sure someone has, someone can feed their family, it solves the, it solves. So the that's problem. the big fear of the actual miners in order mm -hmm. to get the actual miners on board. It's like, Hey, if we close these mines, what am I going to do? There's a fear. Yes. And just the idea of saying green jobs, that doesn't cut it. You have to say, there's going to be a bridge for you to work on a windmill or whatever, you know, whatever's whatever. Yes. We're doing. And, and oftentimes, and oftentimes that is not relayed, uh, relayed correctly. It's not communicated that way. Cause if you say green jobs, yes, that means, it's going to, it, it will be a killer of coal, for example, which it, 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 what's you the problem with killing coal. I mean, what's that? <laughs> I don't say, I'm sorry to say this. I, maybe this makes me out of touch with the people of, of West Virginia, but what is wrong with killing coal? If we can bring to life another, uh, you know, another cleaner um, workplace that these same exact same folks that we need those people who are now working in coal to work at. It's not like we can open up green energy and have nobody working there. We need those guys or women or both or whatever um, to, to do that job. And they're going to be safer. They're going to be, you know, how, how are we not reaching them with all of this good news is the question I have. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, one that West Virginia is very unique in its politics and culture. Um, it's coal. It's a coal culture. Um, you know, 
my grandfather himself, you know, he fought in World War II, was a veteran. When he came home, he already knew where he was going. He was going into the mines. You work in the mines, yep. Yeah. And that's just the reality, um, you know, because the mines traditionally have always been good paying, stable union jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, there was so much just to fight historically, just so they could have those union jobs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's a lot of pride um, in these in, in West Virginians. You know, they are very hardworking, intelligent people. And when you start talking about green jobs and you bring, I've had these conversations and, you know, with people and it really comes down to, yeah, I'd be willing to transition from the mines, but it's that in between, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's that in between that says, um, well, yeah, that's great. If I could make good paying job and not have to go down into those mines because it's, it's dangerous work. It's mm -hmm. extremely dangerous work. Um, and there Do you think that there's a, there's a, you know, uh, I mean, I had in my family, we had actually coal mine folks, um, mm -hmm. working in the coal mines from the Italians. I'm Italian. We're working mm -hmm. in the coal mines of Pennsylvania. Um, right. and so, you know, their fathers did it. Then their father, do you think that there is like a generational pull to just be kind of part of that culture because it's more than just going into the mine. I think you mentioned something about coal culture. Yeah, it is. It, it most definitely is. It's, it's a tradition here in West Virginia. So, you know, that because of that's historically what's been here. Mm. Um, and there's a, there's that pride of being able to say that, you know, we have powered the nation mm -hmm. with our coal here. But the good thing, the good news is, is that you're starting to see more miners wanting to come out of the mines and transition into, you know, renewable green jobs. There's just the biggest, you, you'll ask them, what's the biggest issue? How do I take care of my family in the in-between, mm -hmm. right? Or the misconception that, you know, green jobs don't pay as much mm. as work. Yeah, I wonder where they're getting that idea. <laughs> right. Well, you know, the disparity, the, the disparity there is not far at all. Right. Zach, uh, uh, Keisha men mentioned labor unions. How is um, labor unions in the mine? How, it's a, such an interesting thing because when you think of labor unions, you think of that being something that's kind of on the left and yet West Virginia is still a reddish state, at least kind of culturally uh, with these other kind of social issues. How are the dynamics regarding climate change and what sort of environmental issues are they facing in the state that might move them to support progressive initiatives in this area when they'd otherwise be, you know, on really the red team for a lot of other, of a lot of other issues. Sure. So a lot of the issues we're facing in West Virginia is uh, water, for instance, a lot of the um, uh, fracking, for instance, or going in your know, mountaintop removal, it damages our, the ecosystem. So a lot of communities have, drainage coming down from these old mines that have been abandoned or active ones and they're ruining rivers creeks <clears throat> whole communities of water supply mm -hmm. that, that's the main uh really focal point of the issue there now if you want to um i'm sorry what was your what was your last question it was uh how did but oh no that's okay uh, i i think i packed like four questions into one <laughs> so I, I i don't blame you for getting lost in the in the slew of questions that i asked you one was uh, what the are, since climate change is seen sort of as a progressive issue, uh, it's not necessarily covered in an honest manner on right wing media. It's not necessarily even covered in an honest manner on corporate right. media in right. general, whether it's that's supposed to be your MSNBCs or whatever. Um, my question is, are people who are generally read on social issues willing to cross over to this issue that has been painted not as a, this is affecting all of us issue, but a um, left leaning liberal right. conspiracy. From my experience, talking to these, uh, going into the communities, talking to these people, yes, that you have to actively put in the work and talk to these people face to face on, on their, on everyone's level. Everyone's level is different, right? So you have to go to the communities and actively tell people, explain to people what's going on. Cause like you said, the media is out there telling you one thing. It's very, it's very easy to believe what the media says that that's what you have. But when you have people come and explain to you what's going on, how it's happening, and then when you have the narrative of, hey, we're going to ensure that your family is not going to miss a meal, you will have mm -hmm. 
something to transition to, we will take care of that. That's how you get through it. Too. That, 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 I, I'll keep circling back to that the whole time. That, that is the solution. Ensure the working people have a paycheck, have that security, and you will break the gridlock. And the fact that you both have the status as veterans makes you, um, I would imagine, trusted individuals in the community, given that so many are veterans or are related to veterans. It yes. Is. No. <laughs> it de- yeah, no, it definitely is. And, you know, there is, to, to Zach's point, you know, when you go and you actually talk to these people, you know, traditionally, West Virginia was a blue state mm-hmm. for many years. And uh, up until the rise of um, uh, the Trump administration. Um, so traditionally, West Virginians have liberal values, mm. right? I remember the teacher strike not too long ago. 50, 55 strong. And, nope. you know, and that was a bipartisan. That politics didn't matter. It didn't matter what your political affiliation was. Mm. We all stood together as an entire state and did that. So, you know, when you're looking at just sitting there talking to the average West Virginian and you're talking to them about, like Zach said, their jobs, being able to put meals, uh, you know, food on the table, being able to pay your bills, being able to mm-hmm. keep a roof over your head. Um, you know, you've got the, the, the biggest thing here in West Virginia is underemployment. And uh-huh. you've got families, you know, mom, family and single parents out here working two and three jobs. And their kids, probably the only meal they get is at school. Mm. Right. And that is not a, that's not a political issue. That's a life issue. That's across all lines. That's across all lines. So, you know, when you start talking about being able to bring in, taking this reconciliation bill and getting this passed, so that way we are able to bring in good jobs, training and things like that for working class families, you know, that right there is enough to get people to, Listen. So back to Senator Joe Manchin, does he I mean, if the people are listening, it doesn't necessarily mean he is listening. He seems to be I mean, he has so much money. He lives on a yacht. Uh, I read something somewhere that or maybe it was a guest that came on who talked to me about the people of West Virginia actually like the fact that he is wealthy because West Virginia has been, you know, made fun of for being uneducated, uh, for, you know, not being uneducated, but has been had that thrown at them. Mm. Um, The the whole stereotypes of of the folks of West Virginia. And they kind of like that Manchin is this wealthy guy who made it. Um, But it to me, it seems like he's out of the touch, out of touch with the people. And given all the money he gets from these corporations, is a people's uprising in the state against him? Is it enough even to push him? Well, I mean, to be honest, the one thing that I will say, and this is just from, you know, the uh, interactions that we've had with his staff and talking about this, is that the one thing that Manchin does care about is jobs. Jobs, jobs, jobs. And it would be, you know, and I do believe that that's why we're starting to see this kind of more willingness that we did not see in the past to actually talk about. You see in Mansion actually on board and looking at an all and above energy uh, energy process that we can have here. Um, you know, the, the fact of the matter is, is that it's going to take time to transition. We all know this, right? Um, but at least he is listening now. Now we can't, you know, I'm not, can't speak on what he's done in the past, but now he is listening and, uh, and it's, it's very, uh, optim, uh, I, we feel very optimistic that this is something that he knows is going to help his people here in the state. Well, I appreciate the two of you uh, doing this. You're both in a very um, important position as veterans uh, to speak to the people of that state, to speak to uh, Senator Joe Manchin himself. And, you know, um, he as you as we said at the beginning, as you said, he is the linchpin of, you know, he's either in the way or he's not. So a lot is riding on the work that you're able to do. I really appreciate you both coming on the program. Lakeisha Lloyd, disabled Army veteran who served from 2001 to 2010, mother of two from Charleston, West Virginia, actively working with uh, 
uh, common defense as a climate justice organizer. Zach, I'm going to give you the last word. Zach Shrewsbury served for five years in the U.S. Marine Corps Infantry. After serving on active duty in 2015, you began working on political campaigns. Thank you very much. Uh, from everywhere from Seattle to West Virginia. So we appreciate the work that you've been doing. Zach, uh, last words on how people watching can get involved to help common defense um, and, and to help in this in general, in, in pushing Joe Manchin to where he needs to be. Absolutely. Well, you can always reach us on commondefense.us or literally just look at us on any, we're on all social platforms. Just type in common defense to any search bar and you will find us and, easy to contact and one of us will be in touch with you. Um, the biggest thing is you just got to stay in the fight and you have to have those conversations. You have to, you have to talk to everyone. You can't, you can't just hold back because someone might have a different opinion. You have to challenge that and go at it. Yeah. Look for the common ground, common defense, right? <laughs> common ground. Thank you so very much for coming on the program. I wish you the best of luck with what you are doing. Uh, not just wish you luck, but we need you to be successful. So thank you for keeping up the fight. I know it's not easy uh, and I hope you'll join me again and we can continue to follow up on what's going on. Thank yeah. you for having us. Thank you for having us.